Hey, what's up, guys? It's Wise Guy Vito here, and today I have another tier list video for you guys. Uh, this one will be on tools because I haven't really gone over tools, and tools are kind of an interesting topic. They're you can use them pretty much on the regular. They're not like consumables where it's like a one and done use, and you can find them pretty much like whenever you pick up your loadouts and stuff like that. They're pretty useful in some cases and in other cases uh some of them are really not that great but we'll kind of discuss that today um comment down below uh what you think about tools in general and i think another interesting topic discussion is whether or not we should revert the change in how many tool slots you have because at one point in hunt showdown's life cycle only three tool slots instead of four that we have currently kind of wondering what you guys think about that do you think that it should still be at four or do you think it should be changed back to three to kind of restrict some of the player options that we have currently just comment down below also like share and subscribe i also uh really really enjoy you guys uh, commenting on the videos as well it, it it really shows you guys you know care about hunt showdown the game and stuff like that but it also helps me out and the algorithm and such so um and thank you for all the support so far hopefully uh within the next month we can reach a thousand subs but anyways Let's kind of get started. Um, let's let's kind of get the most. I think it's an S tier one because it's mandatory in my opinion, uh, and that would be the med kit. You you want med kits, like in your loadout. Period. End of story. You need med kits in your loadout at all times. You can get away with it by using regen shots and vigor. But why but even then i would still say still bring med kits regardless because med kits are a quick healing tool whereas with regen shots someone could shoot you and then they could rush you and then you're just sitting there in dark vision at the very least you know hoping and praying that um you're not gonna get killed and such right so that's why i'm saying it's probably best to just you know just Bring a med kit. Bring a med kits. Med kits are definitely mandatory in S tier. Um, all my loadouts have them. You should have them as well. So, absolutely just bring them. Um, choke bombs, I also think are S tier as well. Um, I think they're mandatory for trio gameplay, like duo and trio gameplays. Uh, because burning people and such, like your teammates are burning, um, put them out, right? Instead of you running up to the body and quickly putting out the person you could just throw these on a person's body right um another thing they're good as well is that cutting off um entryways people can still run through it but they have to cough right so they're so not only are they making noise but their aim is a little bit or is worse whenever they run through the choke bombs so in my opinion choke bombs are are definitely up there um some of these traps let's get them out of the way um i think uh, Constantina and Poison are probably A tier. And together, I think they're... Or, well, together they become, like, one of the best combos in the game. For just trapping in general. They... If you put them together, they make an insta-kill trap. Unless someone's running a Poison um, shot, right? In which case, the Poison is really not going to do anything for them. But, Constantina is, like, a little bit more consistent on doing damage you can't insta kill somebody with constantina traps uh but if you put the two together they do become an insta kill because you're holding the person in place and the poison is quickly draining your health pool right so it's good in that regard if you just run poison traps i mean like that's fine but like i said before someone can just be running a poison shot and they can quickly just walk through it and, and take no damage but a poison traps a poison trap you know a trap's a trap so traps are for the most part in a tier except for alert trip mine um because i think that they're not too too great um they <laughs> their job is to alert you when the enemy is close now they did buff them whenever you run through them um they kind of do set you chart a bit but no one uses them as like oh, oh like you know like let's place this here just in case if someone were to run by we know where they're at right People just set them by barrels to then explode the barrels. But barrels are kind of inconsistent on where they're at. 
they could be, you know, like the Pharaoh could be in a great placement, in which case, yes, you know, like alert trip mines are better. But other than that, it's just down to like a consistency thing. Um, but that's just my opinion on alert trip mines. Alert trip mines are, yeah, they're not, they're not too, too great. Um, so, that's, so those are some of the traps. Let's get some of these decoys out of the way. So decoy, um, I guess you just, I think they're just called decoys, are they not? Uh, the ones that you throw like little metal scraps and stuff like that. These used to be terrible. They buffed them so that they sound like footsteps or, 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 or like a player stepping like one at a time. I still think they're really bad. There's been a few occasions where I've gotten some value out of these. But all it does is just confuse the enemy thinking that there's more people. And then the enemy still kind of looks like where you're at, right? Other than that, they're really not that great. You you basically just use them just to unlock stuff. Like blank decoys and decoy fuses. And we'll work it to decoy fuses because decoy fuses are very, very good in my opinion. But but, but overall, you just use these to unlock these things rather than just use them for like the purpose. So if you're just using it just to unlock shit, it's probably not that great. It's, it's or or it is not that great at all. Um, blank fire decoys, I think are probably in C tier. Um, they can legitimately like confuse people, but <laughs> if, let's say if you're throwing it behind the enemy or where the enemy kind of knows where there's 90 people around, and you throw it over there, they're going to know that you're throwing blank decoy fires, right? Um, in which case they're going to be like, okay, well, they're just throwing shit now. So like, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to listen to it. Um, other than that, they're okay. Like they can set stuff on fire. They can blow up barrels. Um, so like cool, like, you know, cool utility and all, but for the most part, they're, they were not that great. Um, decoy fuses, on the other hand, are very, very good. Um, I think that they're a really good tool to for a, a team that's rushing you or someone that's rushing you to throw this out because then it stops them in the tracks because like they don't want to push any further. Uh, plus, they're an amazing push tool. There has been so many times, so many times, where you know, like you know, like we're playing trios and then we you know, like we take out two two teams or like uh, two members of a trio and there's one person left right i throw a decoy fuse at the last person and then say hey listen like that's a fake nade let's push and the other person has to run away so his back is probably turned to you nine times out of ten and he just and you just run up to him and just kill them right it's a really 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 good tool um it's also good at handling um it's, it has several utilities or like other utilities as well it can blow up barrels. I think they can set things on fire. Um, it can it can handle uh, kennels as well, like dog kennels and chicken kennels and, and like chicken coops and stuff like that. You can literally just light it, throw it at the lamp, and it's basically like a quieter version uh, to handling with those uh, rather than just bringing like a suppressed weapon or something like that. So like they're good in that regard. But other than that, they're a fantastic tool to use. I really, really, really like decoy fuses currently. Um, fuses, they're probably in C. Um, their main draw is that you can set armors on fire and you can handle dark dog kennels. And there might be another couple of uses like at nighttime. So you can kind of like blind an area for the most part and use that blinding cover to make some moves. But other than that, you know, they're, they're okay for the most part. They're, they're really not that great. Um, flare pistols are probably a little bit better. Like they're probably B. Um, same thing, set things on fire, blind people, but like it, it's a little bit more controlled in my opinion. And you can, and you can shoot like a little bit farther. Also good at handling dog kennels and you get, you know, like a decent amount of ammo for it. Um, other than that, that's basically it. Uh, the electric lamp is terrible still. <laughs> Uh, they buffed it so that it 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 does offer a lot more light than what it used to, but it's still really bad, it's still really really bad. And you have to bank on that you get a night map, or at least like a time of day towards like dark, 
right? You could run at people with this and a compound if the compound that you know is dark enough. But again, that's just too much inconsistency for me to 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 not use it. So again, that's why I'm I'm putting it in D. Spyglass, um, I'm also gonna put in D as well. No one really uses spyglasses. Um, I think that there might be like a niche use to where like, you know, like you're trying to plan your attack. But other than that, like for the most part, most players just run in anyways because they because like they want to get into a fight rather than stalk and look through a spyglass the entire time. So that's why I'm I'm putting it in D tier. There could be another use for it, but I ha but I haven't seen it yet. Quad derringers probably uh, B. It's okay. It can kill people, which is great. Um, it can one shot headshot people, which is also great. Um, it can handle do uh, dog kennels very well. Um, the problem is is that. It is quiet, but it's not quiet at the same time. Um, somebody can still hear a Derringer. I can still hear a Derringer halfway across the compound still when someone's using it. So it's not it's not loud, but it's not quiet at the same time. But like it's it's an okay tool. Like you can still use it and get value out of it. However, the Penny Derringer I think is actually really, really good. It's basically kind of like a I mean, like, it's a shotgun in your pocket. I mean, like, that's what it is, and that's what it's supposed to be. Um, it's very, very good uh, in those kind of, like, defensive moments. I would never use this offensively. If someone's rushing you, you pull out the little pity derringer, and, you, and then you shoot your two shots, right? Um, it's good in that regard. It's also really, really good for... Well, I'm going to say it's, like, really, really good, but it's, like, it's like decent against boss, because, again, it is penny shot. And penny shots or, or penny shots do really well against AI and bosses in general. So it's okay. It's good. Um, it's probably like on the low side of A in my opinion. Um, throwing axes and throwing knives, I think, are very, very good right now. Um, so with like, for example, with like the uh, the Derringer handling. Um, the Derringer ha handling like dog kennels and stuff like that. Same thing with the flare pistol and the fuse. Why use those whenever you can just use these, right? And they and they're a makeshift uh, melee weapon, and they handle um, AI and like AI when thrown, like like basically one shotting AI when thrown. And they're also really, really quiet when handling dog kennels. Right now, granted, you are wasting a throwing knife or a tomahawk, right, or or throwing axe, excuse me. But it's like it's still quieter, right? And and then you can just run to a toolbox and then get one back, right? So that's what I'm saying. It's really it's better in my opinion, or these are better than any of these, right? Um, that's just my opinion. Also which one do I think is the best still thrower knives did get a buff to where wherever they hit um on a horse it will one shot them right which is a good buff it was actually a very very good buff because you kind of had to aim with a with a throwing knife you had to hit a horse in the head rather than just like in the body area right however I still think the throwing axes are are still the best as far as a throwable tool for the simple fact that even whenever you're exhausted and you don't have any stamina it could still watch uh or um one shot zombies or grunts right it can one shot armored in the chest it can one shot um hives in the chest um whereas with the throwing knives you have to kind of throw like multiple um unless they're like well placed so like a headshot right um but the the throwing knives um, have a have a utility as far as like they do well against dogs, but there's a sneaky way that you can deal with dogs by just if you crouch and melee dogs, it handles them with ease. By the way, um, there's no use or like or like there's no need to like hit them twice whenever you can just charge melee and like crouch and then and then hit them in the face and then one shot them right, and you can do that with um. With dusters as well so you know they're good they're good but but like the 
Throwing Axe, I still think, is better. Um, Dusters is probably A. The reason why that I say Dusters are A um, is because their stamina consumption. Their st the stamina consumption on Dusters is amazing, right? The problem is that they're low on damage. But that's the trade-off that you get, right? Um, knife is probably high A. Um, the reason why that I'm putting it here is because it does way more damage. Um, it can it can one-shot dogs wherever you hit them. Um, they're also, it's also really, really good against most bosses in the game. Especially Scrap Beak, because Scrap Beak takes damage to, to piercing damage. That's a piercing damage type. Um, other than that, but but the downside of it is that emulators, you have to do with emulators somehow. And you're going to have to use your gun. So, and, and, and using your gun is a lot slower than just bringing like a duster, for example. Because the duster is one, two, three, and that's done. Um... A rifle is very, very slow, monotonous. So, um, heavy knife is, it's not, it's terrible, but it's, but it's not like as terrible as what you think that it is. It has really good stamina consumption for light attack, right? The heavy attack just sucks on this thing. It can't one shot a hunter. Um, the light attacks can, can one shot grunts and stuff. But other than that, like, the Heavy Knife still sucks. I don't think they know what to do with the Heavy Knife. The Heavy Knife really shouldn't exist, in my opinion. It should just be Knife, Knuckle Knife, and um, and Dusters. But its saving grace is quite literally that it, can ha that, that it has better stamina consumption as far as light attacks go. But is that enough for me to take it? Not really. Not really. But it's not a D tier. In my opinion, it's not like a really, 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 really bad tool, right? Like, worth not running. Sometimes, you know, if you want to get, like, if you want to run it, you can. But, like, you're you're kind of putting these options down, right? Um, and, well, finally, Knuckle Knife. I still think the Knuckle Knife is the best melee weapon in the game. And this is why. The versatility of it. Statistically, it doesn't do a lot of damage. It's actually a worse damage between um, between all of these, really. So knuckle knife, or sorry, sorry, not knuckle knife. Um, heavy knife, dusters, and the knife, or like the regular knife. It's actually like the worst out of the four as far as damage goes. But where you lose out in damage, yes, you gain in versatility. So you have a piercing type to handle with grunts. And you have knuckles for emulators, right? So, and the stamina consumption on the knuckle knife is is not terrible. It's really, really good, actually. Like I said, it just, it just, it's damage, right? Damage is not all, you know, a lot of times not the thing that you want to go for. Whatever you pick out tools, like, especially like melee weapons. Sometimes it is, depending on like how overpowered that it is, right? Or like how much damage that it can do. But as far as what the uh, the knuckle knife goes, I'm sorry, but like the knuckle knife is still king whenever it comes down to melee weapons, right? Um, it's still very, very good. Like I said, uh, stamina consumption and versatility of it, it's just bar none the best in my opinion. So you guys let me know what you think down below. Like I said before, comment what you think about, you know, whether or not you think that there should be three tool slots versus four. And also let me know what you think about my tier list. Would like to hear y'all's opinion on it. Um, thank you so much for watching. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.